to Dr. Rajesh Verma's YouTube channel. In this video, let us discuss something about your structure and function of human eye. Windows to the world. Jheel sini le aankhe. Gheri gheri aankhe. Aap ki aankhe sab kuch ghe jati hai. Aap ke netra, aap ki nigahe, aap ki nazare. These words which are all used for the human eye. Because human eye is the most beautiful and most prominent organ. It has two beauty, beauty components in it. It itself improves the beauty of the face as well as it's responsible for seeing, enjoying the beauty of the nature. Different colors, different shapes, and different different type of objects so it's a very important organ and it has psychological connotations too so in this video now let us discuss the structure and we'll be discussing two important thing sensation and sensory process what is sensation means Sensing the external or internal stimuli. Whereas what is the sensory process? The process of detection of external or internal stimuli through the activation of sense organs. And which are the sense organs? I know you. You very well know it. Your eyes, your ears, nose, your skin and your tongue. These are your <coughs> sense organs. These are activated by the external as well as internal stimuli. So that activation process is known as sensory process. And discuss and come to the point that is what is visual sensory process. The visual sensory process means transducing the visual stimuli into neural impulses. You know, human eye is a specialized sense organ. What it does is a detects light and transduce it into neural impulse. In fact, eye converts a light rays into images. I'll explain it in very simple terms. When you see an object that is possible only with the help of light, this means some light is falling on the object. From that object, light reflects, travels through your eyes. What eye it in fact is doing is receiving that light rays from that image and organizing that light rays into an object. This means converting light rays into images. And one more important function your eyes are doing is they are converting that physical stimuli that is light into neural impulse or converting into a language that is understood by your optic nerve because physical light cannot travel through your optic nerve. Only neural impulse can through can travel through that. For that reason, eyes is a beautiful medium. This means that eyes that transforms that physical stimuli into very good. You are, you are right into neural impulse that travels through the optic nerve to the specialized brain parts that are responsible for organizing the stimuli, neural impulses received from the eye and interpreting it. So you understood? This is a beautiful eye of a young boy named as Sujal. And if we cut through and see the eye, it looks like something this. And from this eye, see these are the various parts we will be discussing in the coming slides. There is cornea, Aqueous humor, iris, pupil, lens, ciliary muscles, vitreous humor, the blood vessels, macula, optic nerve, and everything else, retina, choroid, sclera, conjunctiva, everything we are discussing. From this, your light enters from here, makes an image. That image was converted into neural impulses through the optic nerve. See, this is your optic nerve here. This is a brain part, cross sectional part of the brain. Here, that your uh, that light is convert, being converted by the eyes into neural impulses. These impulses travel through the optic nerve, various nerve, and to your this part of the brain known as occipital lobe, where it receives this stimuli, 
neural impulses organized and then we interpret what is the object there so this whole process takes milliseconds and we are lucky to have such an organ we through that we enjoy the beauty of the nature and beauty of the colors different different colors so let us move the structure of human eye the outermost layer this is your outermost layer known as which is transparent that is known as cornea then come the second layer this is your second layer made up of watery fluid we call it as a aqueous humor and that's a very important point here what this aqueous humor do is this is a nourishment channel this nourishes the eye and one more important function it do it is that is it gives shape because it's a watery fluid so it gives a required shape to your eye so it's very important if you remove aqueous humor your shape will be diminished just like a, uh, air in the balloon what air does air gives shape to the balloon similar case is here aqueous humor dear friends then the move the third part then there is a circular hole this is your circular hole here known as pupil and here this is your no muscle known as iris and that is the important muscle that gives color to your eye your eyes are black your eyes are brown or something different color so here that color for that uh, who is responsible for giving color to your eyes iris agar aapki aankhein jheel si neeli neeli hain then who is responsible for that neela neela rang that is your iris and that is muscle the next come is next part is your lens this is your lens that is suspended in the air by the muscles which are found just behind the iris this is greenish part is your iris and behind this iris you find there are this black lines they are ciliary muscles what they do is these muscles hold your lens into its place and they suspended it keep suspending it in the uh, correct position why it is suspension i will explain the function then then again comes a open space large open space which is filled with jelly like substance and that substance is known as vitreous humor it has also two functions as aqueous humor that is it also nourishes the eye and it is responsible for for giving a beautiful shape to your eye in this vitreous humor only outside of that you find these are the blood vessels which supply oxygen to your eyes through blood and from there they also carry deoxygenated blood also oxygenated deoxygenated blood also next comes your the last part of your eye where light stops that is known as retina that contains very important thing here is the last this is the last channel where light can travel from that retina didn't allow light travel further but it first transforms the light into neural impulses through the specialized photoreceptors a pair of photoreceptors this is not a pair of photoreceptors there are couple of photoreceptors and these photoreceptors are known as rods and cones so here you could, i think this is the structure you till now you could get something about it and from here these rods and cones transduce or transforms that physical stimuli into the neural impulse and flow through this optic nerve that neural impulse travels further so let us move what is the function of each part which we have discussed earlier that was the name of the part and where it is located and within that i discuss some functions too so once again what is the function of cornea dear friends it refracts the light okay what is the function of pupil it ensures that optimal light which is being reflected from an object enters into your eye what is the function of iris it maintains and regulate the opening of pupil as just like as a camera lens of a camera opening either it constricts and dilates suppose if you are 
uh, visit uh, looking at a very small object so in that case for that you had to uh, have less opening for that we constrict our eyes but if you want to see a large object if you see if you stand up on your uh, roof of your house and look around you have to have more uh, light enter your eyes and iris knows this what that it do is iris dilates your pupil so that the function of iris it maintains and regulate the opening of pupil what the role of aqueous humor i told you nourishment and shape to the eye lens similar as cornea it refracts the light then the vitreous humor similar nourishes and gives shape to the eye what the retina's role dear friends i told you it converts light energy into neural impulses with the help of specialized photoreceptors we call as rods and cones and the eighth and last part that is optic nerve there is only one function it carries neural impulses to the brain specialized areas ha <laughs> what a good image function of human eye This is also one of the functions. You see, this is a uh, function you are seeing. This is also one of the functions of human eyes. In the first encounter, a light rays meet the cornea and then enters the round door. We call it as a pupil. When light knocks the cornea, pupil opens up. Already it said opened up. I just I am talking it in other sense. Uh, light it enters through that small round hole, whose diameter is regulated by. by that you know who regulate the diameter of the pupil yes it is iris and these are two pair of sentinels they are keep guarding the pupil's role okay after meeting through the pupil see light is meeting the pupil the light rays pass through the aqueous humor and falls on the transparent suspended fellow that is waiting there is suspended for something uh, receiving something that is that suspended fellow that is by the ciliary muscles can you name yes it is lens that light meets the lens and do some high hello then light that passes through a gel like substance after passing through the lens the light travels to the gel like substance we call it the vitreous humor to focus it on the a platform uh found there which is decorated with two important photoreceptors and that platform is placed at the back of the eye bone and we call that a decorated platform as a retina then lens reflect the light rays in a way that places the image of the object upside down it's a very strange thing whatever the thing you are seeing here that image of this video is upside down on your retina okay it is done by this trick is done by the lens lens reflect the light in such a way okay at at this point where your image is focused on the retina rods and cones are stimulated if they are stimulated what they do they do their own function and what their function they convert the light rays into neural impulse which then passes to the brain via good optic nerve so we have this is the real physiological function of your eye and this is your psychological function of your eye okay so what are terms related to your eye structure function first we got the rods i am talking about rods time and again and which is specialized photoreceptors and uh, sensory receptors also what they do is they are, where they are found can you tell me yes it is found in retina they are responsible for vision in low intensity of light we call it a scotopic vision or night vision means live one intensity of light is low that time your rods are activated so mostly during nights or in a dark room the intensity of light is less that time these rods are activated and you know in your each eye 100 million rods are found that is 10 crore rods are in one eye so see how many things you are carrying today you you could know that you are carrying 20 crores of rods in your eyes big data you are carrying big objects you are carrying in your small beautiful eye and why there are no the rods 
बिकॉज देयर सेप इज जस्ट लाइक अ रोड मास्टर जी का डंडा डू यू नो दिस सो दिस इज रोड दीज आर नोन एज बिकॉज इट्स ड्यू टू इट्स शेप दे आर नोन एज रोड द नेक्स्ट सेंस रिसेप्ट आर कॉन्स वाई दे आर नोन एज कॉन्स नी नो टू एक्सप्लेन सी दिज द कलर पार्ट सी द ब्यूटिफुल कलर दीज आर कलरफुल पार्ट देयर सेप इज जस्ट लाइक कॉन्स सो दे आर नोन एज कॉन्स एंड यू नो वाई दे आर कलरफुल okay i'll explain here there is this cones are responsible for chromatic vision or color vision you are seeing this red this blue this is green this is pinkish red these are the blacks this orange is light yellow why this who is responsible for this you are 100% right dear friends it is cones due to your availability of cones in your eyes you can see these colors okay and you know you have 60 lakh cones found in each eye now you can see imagine you have 10 crore rods in eye, in an eye and 60 lakh cones this means you are carrying 20 crore rods and 1.2 crore cones in your both eyes how much big items you are carrying in your eyes apart from lens retina muscles blood vessels everything else you can imagine how beautiful and compact your eye is do you know what is fovea see this is the yellowish part fovea is the central part of retina which have highest concentration of cones where large number of cones are found do you know how many cones are found in each eye 60 lakhs so highest concentration of your cones are found in a a one location we call it as a fovea and due to that concentration its color seems to be light yellow that's why it is known as yellow spot and then the fourth part here is blind spot see here is a blind spot the area of retina that have no reporter receptors at every location of retina it have both type of photoreceptors that is rod and cones there is a one place where there is neither red rods neither nor cones found and from here from this location optic nerves leaves the retina so the two important part why it is known as blind spot because if light falls on this part we cannot see what the object is because everything it is there light travels from its uh, normal channel and reach to that point but due to the absence of rods and cones which are the photoreceptors or the sensory receptors we cannot see the object because it is falling here because there is no photoreceptors and here only that your optic nerve leaves the retina for your brain so dear friends we we face a problem generally known as near sightedness near sightedness means nazdeek ka dikhna means the problem in seeing the far objects that is not near sightedness the near objects are clearly visible and distant objects are out of focus why it happens because the visual image which has to form on the correct position of the retina it forms slightly in front of retina before retina it forms so this is near sightedness it's supposed to form here this is normal vision the object of that image of this candle has to form just on the retina here but when individual is near sighted in that case the image forms here before the retina and for that we use glasses and that glasses correct this what they do is they ensure that image forms here and we see the objects then opposite to it is a far sightedness means dur ke object sab dikhai dete hain aur nazdeek ke object dekhne mein pareshani hoti hai kathinai hoti hai why is that because distant objects are seen clearly and near objects are out of focus because the visual image is focused slightly behind the retina because here see this far sightedness the image of this candle is supposed to form here that is here 
but it is forming little away behind the retina and due to that we face difficulty in seeing the near objects getting my point so again for that we use lenses or glasses and that correct your image and that image focus on the correct portion that is on the retina and we can see the objects your optic nerve what is optic nerve a bundle of axons of ganglion cells found behind the retina see this is the you say uh, objects and this is the image of the object of retina from that image this uh, retina two uh, retina contains two type of i told you sense receptors this sense receptors converts that this uh, stimulus physical stimulus into the light rays into the neural impulse and from this neural impulse the neural impulse are travel to your brain through a nerve we call it is a optic nerve which is just found behind the retina and carries this nerve impulses to your occipital lobe there that object is interpreted and seen then comes your what is visual adaptation the process of getting adjusted to different intensities of light when we enter in dark room or from dark room to light room from light room to dark room it takes time to adjust with the and see the things so that process is known as visual adaptation so it so almost two types a light adaptation and dark adaptation what is light adaptation process of adjusting to bright light after exposure to low intensity light means from darkness to light you are adapting to the light when you travel from a dark room to a light room in that case you have to your eyes have to adjust because earlier your roads were active because you were in the dark room now your cones has to activate it take little bit of time that is it take almost 1 to 2 minutes to adjust and that process is known as light adaptation means adapting to the light next is dark adaptation dark adaptation means adapting to the dark means process of adjusting to low intensity of light after exposure to bright light best example is when you enter in the movie theater that time you are coming from a bright light and you are entering in a dark room in that case you take little bit of more time that is you take 30 minutes or more you can take more than 30 minutes first the moment you enter the dark room you see it's everything very very dark you cannot see anything but after 30 minutes or 25 minutes you start seeing the objects because earlier your cones were active now cones has to deactivate and roads has to take a role and there are other more physiological phenomena biological phenomena occurring in your eyes that is beyond the discussion of this uh, video so in that case it take little bit of time and that is known as dark adaptation and the last part is after images what are after images the persistence of effect of visual stimuli even after it has been removed from the visual field suppose uh, there is a you, you all always visualize after images you can make small experiment you can what show your hand to the students say you can say to the students kindly look at my hand carefully and keep moving that hand after that you say close your eyes the students will close your eyes and you ask them now you are seeing my hand moving for few seconds they will say yes why because that stimuli has been removed because uh, removing your eyes has been closed but still we can visualize the images that is known as after images so dear friends references you can always cross check them the sensory process that is auditory sensory process and dear friends if you like this video share with your friends or those who want to study psychology or if you dislike it fully or some part of it kindly do share with me i love your comments and i thanks to my uh, friends who see my videos and put comments beautiful comments in my comment box and if you don't want to see you don't want to uh, put your comments in your comment box you can directly write to me at varmasuvid@yahoo.com once again thank you friends for watching this video
and all the best for your forthcoming exams see you soon with next video